Rumi and why is he so popular? I grew up with Persian poetry, including Rumi's, so I thought I would share my personal experience with Rumi's poetry. Rumi's essential message is about universal love. He invites his reader to look within and connect with that divine love. Rumi realized that the cause of misery in this world is separation from our source, forgetting where we came from and who we really are. Rumi also understood the value of silence and letting go of unnecessary speech. He even chose silent as his pen name. He knew that where unity is experienced, there is little need for words. In one poem, he says, last night I became mad. Love saw me and said, I'm here. Don't shout, don't wail, just be silent. Don't talk of the mundane, talk of nothing but beauty. I am the servant of this magnificence, just be silent. I said, oh love, what I fear is something else. Love said, there is nothing else, just be silent. So who was Rumi? Let's take a quick look at this 13th century Persian mystic. Jalaleddin Muhammad Balkhi, known as Rumi in the West and Molana or Our Master in the East, was born in the city of Balkh in the eastern shores of Persian Empire in 1207. He then settled in Konya in today's Turkey, where he died in 1273. His father was a theologian of uh, Islamic tradition with Sufi tendencies. Rumi studied under his father and became a learned Islamic scholar. But it was obvious from early on that his spiritual journey would lead him beyond Sharia and daily practices of religion to a search for the relationship of human beings and their divine essence. After his father's death, Rumi, then 24, took over as a religious leader and attracted substantial following despite his young age. Some years passed before he met his spiritual guide and teacher, Shamsa Tabrizi. It is said that the attraction between the two in that initial encounter was instant and intense. They met behind closed doors for months and Rumi didn't return to his classes. Shams was a curious and restless mystic himself, questioning the unexamined practices of well-known theologians of his day. He was all about meaning and depth rather than theory. He is said to have dumped all of Rumi's books into a well someday, saying you need to have understood the meaning of these words and to look within to find the truth. He appended Rumi's life, but Rumi immediately realized that he has met a, um, an extraordinary man and prepared courageously to receive this knowledge, this new knowledge, by emptying himself of all of his previous book learnings. Rumi's followers felt betrayed and they blamed Shams for the change in behavior of their teacher. It was for the consideration of Rumi's reputation that Shams disappeared without a trace once 16 months after their initial meeting and then after a short return, this time for good. Who knows, perhaps Shams saw the pain of separation as uh, a vehicle for Rumi's spiritual growth. After his grief for Shams's disappearance, 
Rumi found that his teachings were guiding him from within. Not having written any poetry before Shams, he was now pouring his soul out through poems, which resulted in two of the world's most influential mystic poetry works, the Masnavi Collection and Divan Shams, or Book of Shams. The literal meaning of Masnavi is rhyming couplets. Rumi himself describes Masnavi as the root of the root of the root of religion. A very in-depth look at religion. Affectionately called the Quran in Persian, Masnavi spans six volumes comprising more than 25,000 verses. My personal experience of reading Rumi's poetry is following the master on his journey. Like a loving teacher, he uses stories and images to bring to life the wisdom that he wants to impart. He invites us to an exploration of our own being. Reading Rumi's poetry has sharpened my sense of universality and of the gift of love within which we breathe. His wisdom taught myself and my family acceptance and surrender, to be content with life regardless of its ups and downs, and to trust that what appears to us as undesirable and unpleasant at the time may be the very best that's needed for that moment. As the world's most powerful mystic poet, Rumi is called the prophet of love because of his unique ability to represent religion in light of pure light, pure love. To leave you with a taste of Rumi's poems in Farsi, I have chosen a few lines from Divan Shams, which demonstrate Rumi's experience of breaking down false identities, emptying himself of all he knew and believed in, and the experience of divine love that Shams had shown him. I'll read a few lines in Farsi just to give you a feeling for the rhythm, and then I will read in English. مرده بودم زنده شدم گریه بودم خنده شدم دولت عشق آمد و من دولت پاینده شدم گفت که دیوانه نی لایق این خانه نی رفتم و دیوانه شدم سلسله بندنده شدم گفت که سرمست نی رو که از این دست نی رفتم و سرمست شدم he said, you're not slain, not yet drenched in ecstasy. Right there in front of his life-giving face, I fell like a lifeless corpse. He said, you're a sheikh, a master. I said, I am nothing, only a slave to your command. He said, you already have wings. I won't give you wings. Seeking his feathers and his wings, I, I let go of mine. Then love said to me, stay here. I am the eternal love. I said, I will never leave. I'm here now and forever. 